Hey, what's up everyone? This is Trader Tim from eminimind.com doing a trade recap uh, really you know, for the week here. Uh, today's Thursday, the 27th, 2020, and uh, another sizable down day here. Um, when we get these monster uh, down moves, it really doesn't make for the greatest of intraday trading. Um, I know some traders have switched over to the micro ES going with a little bit wider stop and uh, tried to catch, you know, more of the the swings that have been happening uh, throughout the day with um, some good success. But when it comes to trying to, you know, buy counter trend longs in the market, you know, just you, you may get a little bit of a bounce for, you know, a few points, but then the market rolls back over. And so when I see a day uh, like today, uh, we also talked about it on Tuesday in the, the live room, when the nicey ticks are making extreme low ticks, but then, you know, another minute later, we make a new low price, you know, that pattern leads to, or is a, is contextual around the trending day. And so when I see that happening, low nicey tick and the new low price right away, then I don't wanna be going counter trend and trying to pick bottoms. Uh, so really instead, um, or you know, in lieu of uh, heavy day trading on these types of days, um, I kind of do a, a number of things. I uh, let some of the, the swing trading positions that I'm in take over. Uh, we'll go through those here in a minute. And um, I also add to longer term retirement accounts. Uh, I put this 3000 level uh, on my chart here a couple days ago as sort of my target that was about a 10% correction um, up here uh, on the first uh, gap down when we came to this uh, low swing low. I did buy a little bit in uh, my retirement account. And then as we made our move down to 3000, I've added some more. Um, one of the ETFs I use is uh, the VUG, the Vanguard Growth Fund, uh, pretty simple. Um, so I added to that one today and uh, about a 15% correction would take us all the way to the full halfway back. And, you know, I, I spoke in the last video let me go back to the daily chart. I'm not a big fan of coming in and saying, okay, I'm going to draw a retracement from this low to high. And then we break that one. And then I say, oh, well, let me go down to this low to high. Oh, no, no, let me go down to the next low. What I like to do is draw the most recent retracement. So from the very most recent swing low to high. And then once that breaks, I just revert to the full halfway back. Um, unless for some reason we stop at a, what seems like a random point. You can draw up a retracement as a way to get a target, but I like to see the market reversing and moving higher before then drawing, uh, trying to get a target. Um, you're kind of leapfrogging uh, at that point. But you can see the swing low from December of last year to the, uh, or of uh, two years ago really, to the high from uh, this month, last month, um, pulling back would give us a 2867 on the, the larger halfway back. And I mean, really, that uptrend is still pretty solid. Um, certainly the uh, coronavirus uh, fears are legitimate. And when you have sort of a widespread outbreak like this, um, there's, there's a lot of real, um, bad implications that can occur, you know, outside of the financial, um, but just losing lives. Uh, that being said, you know, there's likely to uh, have some things come out in the coming weeks in regards to um, quarantine, containment, vaccines that uh, will hopefully uh, keep this thing contained. And if that does happen, uh, there's likely to be some monster updates here in the next couple of weeks. And, you know, when you look back a couple of years from now, this little 
you know, this will look like a small pullback in the bigger picture. Um, even these, uh, the pullback at the end of uh, 2018, I mean, it's just, yes, it has an impact uh, in the immediate, but in the longer term, I mean, to be buying, to have the opportunity to buy up uh, and add to longer term positions um, is just a, a great opportunity for those that are not already um, well into um, retirement age. If you've already got um, your, you know, couple of million dollars you're sitting on and you're just trading uh, out of, you know, the enjoyment of it, then, you know, it's, it's a good opportunity to look towards swing trading in these types of environments where you get, you know, monster gaps in, in these sell-offs. Intraday, it can, it can chop you up um, pretty good um, unless you're switching to a larger stop, in which case, you know, moving to uh, the micro contract does have some advantages. Uh, I did want to talk about, so the, the last short that I have on um, that BNFT that I've had for quite a while now, since the beginning of the year, has really, um, these last couple of days, nosedived. And so I've just got my stop above uh, today's high. And um, I always start my day with no stops active. So if tomorrow, if we gap up above today's high, I'll wait 15 minutes and then put my stop a few cents above that 15 minute bar. And then if I get stopped out, no big deal. But I don't carry the orders over uh, into the next day. So I just kind of, you know, make a, the mental mental note, okay, 1335 is the high. So I use like a 1341 as my stop. And as long as we don't gap up tomorrow, then that's, uh, that's where I'll put it. Um, the short, this is probably one of the, um, best uh, cleanest shorts I've had where you know the low of the high bar was up here and we have not um, broken a prior day's high except for this little cluster here and it was a situation where we kind of gapped up we put in a um, 15 minute uh, bar I believe and even the high was a 1920 and then we went to a 1928 and um, I had my stop at 1931. So, you know, giving it 10, 15 cents is definitely worth it. Cause sometimes you just peak above and then you roll right back over. Um, and so, yeah, pretty strong uh, downtrend and um, lots of, lots of uh, profit potential on this one. Um, that's essentially realized. Um, this is one where I have not taken really any off, so I've got the full position. Uh, the Actually, ironically, I put on a long a couple days ago in the AR, uh, ATRC um, over here, or above the high bar in the 25th, and so the entry was on the 26th, and I just have my stop um, kind of in, in in two parts, I've got half underneath today's low and then half underneath this swing low. So just as a way to kind of reduce the risk on the position, tighten, be or um, being a little bit aggressive with half of it and then a little bit more conservative with the other half. So that's what I've got going on. Not a whole lot of um, uh, day trades going on and that's okay because there will be a lot of good stuff that come out of this kind of a pullback. If you look back to um, like August when we sold off, um, yes, it was a little bit um, with the gaps in here. Some of the days end up being not much to do, like these little doji days, but there were plenty of good trading days in the mix um, as we kind of came out in, uh, in September and especially in October. So. Not all, um, not all bad to have these these big sell-offs, and I would argue not bad at all. It's actually a, a really good thing. So, makes the market healthy, builds some, uh, builds up the support levels, and uh, gives us some room to catch the next leg up. So, any questions? Feel free to uh, drop them in the the comments below. I'm not a huge uh, fundamental guy, so if you've got um, you know bigger fundamental questions, I may not have an answer for you, but technical wise, um, as it relates to the E-mini uh, S&Ps and any of the futures markets and swing trading stocks, 
happy to answer uh, any questions you have. So thanks for uh, watching, and I will talk to everyone soon. Thanks.